All right, YouTube. Welcome back to New Zero Land. Uh, in the spirit of uploading videos more often and keeping you guys updated, I'm back at the EV Link station to do some more testing. So, I want to thank everybody for all your comments and um, tips and tricks and advice. And it's freaking awesome. This community is amazing. And so I want to thank everybody for all that. Um, and I especially want to thank uh, DigiNow for reaching out and <laughs> offering to fly down to New Zealand to help me out. Um, you guys are amazing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think we have this figured out. So uh, I have everything. Let's see. Let's pull up the um, serial terminal app. Yeah, yeah. Basically, the idea is uh, if I plug in, this should still be on my um, my home charging power, which is like 1.7 kilowatts uh, and one charger. So this should turn the bike on. Yep. And it should be only using one charger at 1.7 kilowatts. So the idea is this station requires bigger resistor than the one that's in the cable. That's what we think. So it's used to 32 amp cables and this is only a 16 amp cable. So the idea is that hopefully if you have a big enough cable with a big enough resistor inside set up for maximum charging, then it should all work. But at the moment, um, we're thinking that I'm trying to pull too much power for what the cable is able to like speak to the station with. Like the, the communication is is not right. So I'm gonna make a new let's see. I'm gonna go three chargers with a maximum of thirty five hundred three point five kilowatts. Let's try this. What was that number four? So three chargers, 3.5 kilowatts. I'm just gonna keep this recording just to see what happens. So the idea is that if I set the power down low enough and use all the th all three chargers, then it'll think it's just using wall power, like eight amps or something, and it won't shut down. That's the theory. Uh, and if that's the case, then all we need to do is swap the resistor and it'll work and we can use full power, 10 kilowatts, and charge with these with no problem. Um, and I also want to do another test over the weekend with Tim, because he has a totally unmodified DigiNow setup. He has the pan with three chargers, and he has the big Menicus Type 2 inlet provided by DigiNow. So, but he also has a 32 amp cable. So hopefully, everything works and all we have to do is use 32 amp cables or a resistor cheat in this one. And uh, so far so good. Usually it's like two to three minutes it shuts down. It realizes that something's wrong with the cable or I don't know. This is apparently the new standard in New Zealand. These are gonna be everywhere. It's really important to use these also because these are popping up at every warehouse as I was saying last time uh, the warehouses are all over the country so um, these ones there's one on one side and then another over here that I guess no one uses because there's like spider webs but the hope is that I can use these or we can use these all three of us with DigiNow superchargers and we can charge really fast and charge up in an hour because this should be an hour from zero to basically 90% or something where you want to unplug. And so this, like for long range road trips and stuff, this is like this working with this station is huge. And I chose to spend all my money on fast chargers instead of a power tank because if you can charge fast, if you can charge within, within an hour, um, that really changes everything. You'd want to stop anyways, I think, is what I'm saying. Like, after two hours of riding, which is basically what I can do with this, an hour and a half to two hours, you'd want to stop anyway. So if you can stop and charge up really fast, then um, that's the way to go. 
<laughs> it always feels weird. Um, people, people walking by, just normal people. I say this all the time, but it feels like I'm from the future, and I came back, and I'm, I'm just doing something that is so different, and barely anyone's doing, which is kind of cool. All right, so I'm using 3.5 kilowatts. So let's just try bumping that up a little bit and see what happens. So I'll bump it up to maybe um, uh, 4,500. That might be too much, but let's see, let's see. Let's see at what point it shuts off. I might actually edit this video. It's just taking a long time. You guys don't want to sit around and just watch this thing charge. It's like, <laughs> I would say when you're charging, you should probably be like doing something else, you know, either shopping at the warehouse, buying Legos, or, uh, I don't know, eating food or something, stopping for lunch. But I know that's not, like, that's the ideal situation where you can stop for lunch and be hanging around for an hour and it's not really a big deal. You're not just, like, sitting by your bike waiting for it to charge. And that's not always the case because sometimes these chargers are out in the middle of nowhere. So that's another reason I really want these warehouse stations to work because um, my other option is, like, a campsite which is a good, you know, 20 minute walk into civilization. Oh, it tripped. All right, so there you go. That seems to be the answer then. It can't handle 4.5 kilowatts, but it can handle 3.5 kilowatts. Which means all it needs is a bigger resistor. Easy. All right, so I'm going to pack this up and head home. And so uh, I'll upload another video in a couple of days uh, with Tim's 32 amp uh, cable to make sure that that works. And uh, yeah, so EV Link, we will return. In, in the next episode of New Zealand. Alright, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.